Welcome space friends and moon lovers. Tonight's moon holds a secret that most people will never notice. While everyone sees that glowing orb in the sky, few realize they're looking at a 4.5 billion year old museum of cosmic violence, frozen in time. And tonight, September 14th, 2025, the lighting is absolutely perfect for exploring five incredible lunar features that will blow your mind. Thanks for joining us again. Tonight we have something special. Our moon reaches its last quarter phase today at 6.33 a.m. Eastern Time. Now illuminated at 47% and sitting 367,044 kilometers from Earth. But here's what makes tonight extraordinary. The Terminator line, that dramatic shadow boundary between lunar day and night, runs right down the moon's center creating the most dramatic shadows and contrasts you'll see all month. Think of it like this. Imagine shining a flashlight at a basketball from exactly the side. Every crater rim, mountain peak and valley creates maximum shadow contrast. That's exactly what's happening on the moon tonight. It's the perfect night for lunar exploration. So whether you've got binoculars, a telescope or just your naked eyes and curiosity, Let's embark on a journey across 367,000 kilometers of space to explore five spectacular lunar landmarks. And I promise, after tonight, you'll never look at the moon the same way again. Before we begin, let's get our bearings. Tonight, our moon is 22.43 days into its cycle, exactly at last quarter phase, also called third quarter. The moon is currently in the constellation Gemini and if you're watching from the northern hemisphere you'll see it rise around midnight reaching its highest point in the southern sky around sunrise. The last quarter phase is actually the best phase for lunar observation, better than full moon or even gibbous phases. Why? Because with the terminator running right down the moon's centre we get maximum contrast on features along this central meridian. Craters that look flat just a few nights ago, now reveal themselves as deep, three-dimensional bowls with dramatic shadow. Our first stop takes us to the moon's northern regions to visit Plato, often called the Dark Floor Crater. Even with binoculars, you can spot this as a distinctive dark oval near the moon's northern edge, sitting on the border between Mare Imbrium and Mare Frigoris. Plato is massive, 109 kilometers across, roughly the distance from London to Oxford. But what makes Plato special isn't just its size, it's that eerily smooth, dark floor. When the ancient impact created this crater 3.8 billion years ago, lava welled up from the moon's interior and flooded the crater floor, creating what looks like a perfectly dark lake. Here's something fascinating. Amateur astronomers have been documenting mysterious transient lunar phenomena in Plato for centuries. Brief flashes, colour changes and misty patches that appear and disappear. While most are likely caused by sunlight catching crater rim peaks at just the right angle, some remain unexplained to this day. If you have a telescope of 6 inches or larger, challenge yourself to spot the craterlets on Plato's floor. There are at least four tiny craters visible in amateur scopes, but seeing them requires perfect atmospheric conditions. Victorian astronomers used Plato as a test of their telescopes and observing skills. Can you match their eagle eyes? The crater is named after the Greek philosopher Plato, and as fitting, just as Plato contemplated the nature of reality, this crater invites us to contemplate the violent forces that shaped our celestial neighbor. Moving to the moon's central regions, we find one of the most impressive crater alignments visible tonight. And with the last quarter terminator running right through this area, the view is absolutely spectacular. The Ptolemaeus chain, three massive craters, Ptolemaeus, Alphonsus and Arzachel, forms a striking north-south line that's impossible to miss, even with binoculars. Ptolemaeus, the northernmost and largest at 153 kilometers across is ancient beyond comprehension, formed 4 billion years ago. 
Its floor is remarkably flat and smooth, almost like a dusty plain. Through a telescope tonight, with the Terminator's dramatic lighting, you'll notice it's peppered with tiny ghost critters and ancient impacts nearly buried by dust and debris over the eons. The crater lacks a central peak, suggesting it's been filled in over billions of years. Just south lies Alphonses, 119 kilometers wide, and this one holds mysteries. In 1958, Russian astronomer Nikolai Kozirev claimed to have observed a gaseous emission here, possible evidence of volcanic activity. NASA was so intrigued that Ranger 9 deliberately crashed into Alphonses in 1965 to study it. Through your telescope, look for the dark patches on its floor. These volcanic ash deposits are especially visible tonight, with the side lighting creating strong contrasts. The youngest of the trio is Arzachel, 97 kilometers across but the most dramatic. Its terraced walls rise 3,600 meters and a massive central peak towers 1,500 meters from the crater floor. Tonight's last quarter shadows make this peak look like a pyramid rising from darkness, absolutely spectacular in a telescope. What's fascinating is that these three craters tell the story of lunar bombardment over time. Ptolemaeus is so old it's been softened by eons of smaller impacts. Alphonsus shows middle age with volcanic modifications. Arzakel is the youngster, still sharp and dramatic after only 3.2 billion years. Together they are like looking at three generations of lunar history in one view, and tonight's Terminator position makes them the star attraction. Now for one of the moon's most beautiful features. Sinus Iridum, the Bay of Rainbows. And tonight, with the Terminator position just right, you're about to see why it earned this poetic name. Sinus Iridum is a massive semicircular bay on the northwestern edge of Mary Imbrium, spanning 236 kilometers across, roughly the width of Ireland. But here's what makes it special. It's actually a crater that lost a fight with lava. Imagine a giant impact crater, 260 kilometers wide, that formed 3.8 billion years ago. Then, millions of years later, the lavas of Mary Imbrium flooded in from the south, completely drowning the southern wall and leaving only the northern rim standing like a cosmic amphitheater. Uh, the surviving rim forms the Mont de Jure, Jure Mountains, and these peaks are spectacular. They rise up to 6,000 meters above the bay floor. That's almost as tall as Denali. Through binoculars tonight, you can see this mountain arc catching sunlight in a way that creates the famous jeweled handle effect. The peaks light up like diamonds, while the bay floor remains in relative shadow. Here's something magical. Twice during each lunar month, when the sun angle is perfect, like tonight, these mountains cast intricate shadows across the bay floor that look like dark fingers reaching into the smooth lava plain. Some observers say it looks like a giant's hand grasping at the moon's surface. Others see ocean waves frozen in stone. But the real treat comes if you have a telescope. Look for Promontorium Laplace and Promontorium Heraclides, the two headlands that mark the horns of the bay. These massive mountain blocks are the remnants of the original crater's rim where it meets Mare Imbrium. Between them, the ghost of the drowned crater wall sometimes appears as a subtle ridge beneath the lava, visible only when the lighting is just right. There's a Chinese legend about this bay. It's where the moon goddess Chang'e liked to gaze at Earth, and the curved mountains were her rainbow bridge. Modern Chinese lunar missions have actually targeted areas near here, bringing ancient mythology and cutting edge science together through any instrument tonight. Spend time exploring this region. The play of light and shadow changes by the hour and patient observers often report seeing subtle features appear and disappear as the sun angle shifts. It's one of the most dynamic and rewarding regions on the entire lunar surface. Let's head south now to one of the moon's most magnificent craters, Clavius. Even with binoculars, 
You can spot this as one of the largest craters visible on the moon, but a telescope reveals why it's so special. Octavius is enormous, 225 kilometers across and 3.5 kilometers deep. You could fit the entire country of Switzerland inside it. But size isn't what makes Clavius famous. Look carefully and you'll see something remarkable. A curved arc of progressively smaller craters marching across its floor, like a set of cosmic stepping stones. This crater chain isn't random. After Clavius formed from a massive impact four billion years ago, a series of smaller impacts created these craters in an almost perfect arc. The largest of these inner craters, Rutherford, is 50 kilometers across, followed by Clavius B at 22 kilometers, then C at 17 kilometers, and so on, getting progressively smaller. Tonight's last quarter lighting creates dramatic shadows in each of these craters, turning Clavius into a three-dimensional wonderland. Through a telescope, it looks like you could walk from crater to crater across this ancient floor. The crater is named after Christopher Clavius, a 16th century Jesuit mathematician who helped create the Gregorian calendar we use today. There's poetry in that, a crater marking deep time, named after someone who helped humanity keep track of time. Fun fact, Clavius gained fame in popular culture as the site of the lunar base in Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. While we don't have a base there yet, its relatively flat floor and perpetual sunlight on the rim make it a genuine candidate for future lunar settlements. For our final feature, we journey to the moon's southwestern regions to visit Schickart, one of the most visually striking craters you'll ever see. Located near the lunar limb, this massive crater is perfectly illuminated during tonight's last quarter phase, and its unique appearance has earned it the nickname the Patchwork Crater. Schickart is huge, 227 kilometers in diameter, nearly as large as Clavius. But what makes it truly special is its bizarre floor coloration. Through binoculars, you'll notice something odd. The crater floor isn't uniform. Instead, it looks like a patchwork quilt with distinct light and dark regions. Here's what's happening. The northern and southern portions of the floor are noticeably darker than the central stripe. This isn't an optical illusion, it's real. The dark patches are actually different types of volcanic material. After the initial impact 3.85 billion years ago, different lava flows flooded parts of the crater at different times, each with slightly different mineral compositions. The result? A crater that looks like someone painted stripes across its floor. Through a telescope tonight, the last quarter lighting reveals incredible detail. The crater walls, though heavily eroded and broken in places, still rise 1,500 metres above the floor. Look for the smaller crater Schickhart A on the northern floor at 20 kilometres wide. It creates a perfect bullseye pattern against the dark volcanic material. But here's the really cool part. Near the crater's centre, you might spot several dome-like hills. These aren't impact features. They're volcanic domes. These formed when thick, viscous lava pushed up from below, but didn't quite break through to the surface, creating these gentle swellings. It's like looking at frozen geological bubbles from billions of years ago. The crater is named after Wilhelm Schickert a 17th century German astronomer and mathematician who actually invented one of the first mechanical calculating machines 20 years before Pascal. There's something fitting about a patchwork crater being named after someone who pieced together mechanical parts to create something new. What makes Schickart especially dramatic tonight is its position near the lunar limb combined with the last quarter phase. The low sun angle emphasizes every subtle elevation change and those mysterious dark patches create a three-dimensional effect that's absolutely mesmerizing through a telescope. Some observers say it looks like a giant eye gazing back at Earth. Fun fact, Schickart's unusual floor has made it a target for future lunar missions. Scientists want to sample those different lava flows to understand the moon's volcanic history better. You're looking at a potential landing site for future astronauts or robotic missions.
Before we wrap up, let me share some pro tips for tonight's observation. First, timing is everything. The last quarter moon rises just after 9pm here in the UK. For the best viewing with minimal atmospheric distortion, observe around midnight. Second, let your eyes adapt. Spend at least 15 minutes away from bright lights before observing. You'll be amazed how much more detail emerges. Third, if using a telescope, try different eyepieces. Start with low magnification to get oriented, then zoom in on specific features. Sometimes less magnification reveals more detail than high power. Fourth, sketch what you see. Even if you're not an artist, drawing helps you notice details you'd otherwise miss. Those Victorian astronomers who discovered so much about the moon, they had no cameras, just pencils and patience. Tonight's last quarter moon at 47% illumination offers absolutely perfect conditions for seeing these features. The terminator running down the moon's centre creates the maximum possible shadow contrast. Remember, in just a day or two, the Terminator will have moved on and these same features will look completely different. The moon is dynamic, ever-changing, offering a new show every night. As you gaze up at our celestial companion tonight, remember, you're looking at Earth's oldest companion, a world that has watched over our planet for 4.5 billion years. Every crater tells a story of cosmic violence. Every mare speaks of ancient volcanism. And tonight, with the perfect last quarter lighting, you're seeing these stories written in the starkest contrast of light and shadow. So get outside tonight, look up and explore these incredible features for yourself. Share your observations in the comments. Which feature was your favorite? Did you spot the volcanic patches in Alphaenses? Could you see Schickert's patchwork floor? Could you count the craters in Clavius? Until next time, this is Lunar Explorer reminding you that the universe's greatest wonders are hiding in plain sight, just waiting for you to look up. Clear skies, everyone.